So we finished modeling the house. We've done all our floor plans, our sections, our elevations. It's time to move on to the structural portion of this class. On a project this size, you're probably going to be doing your own structural drawings. At a very minimum, you need to understand how the structure in your design works so you know that you're creating something that's actually buildable. So in this uh, portion of the class, we're going to be talking about different structural systems for a uh, residential house. We're going to be talking about uh, how to lay it out so that it works and supports your design, how to model it in Revit, and then of course how to create the drawings from your model. Uh, we're going to create a foundation plan with uh, foundation walls and footers. We're going to create spot footers to support any columns we have. We're going to do a second floor framing plan where we actually model all the joists. Uh, and then we're going to do a roof framing plan which is mostly going to be line work. In this first lesson here we're going to cover the foundation plan which is going to show the layout for the foundation plan. It's going to show the size of the walls, the size of the footers, and the dimensions that they need to be built to. So let's get started. So what we need to do to create our foundation plan is to create a new level uh, that's going to act as the base of our foundation walls, the top of our footing, and then we can use to create an actual plan. So I'm going to go into section A, and you can do this from any section or elevation, anywhere that you see your story pole. I'm going to select top of slab, I'm going to do CO, and I'm just going to copy it down. Um, 42 inches and it's called level 14 I'll click onto it and I'll call it top of footing and so this is going to be our base for our foundation walls I need to go up to view I would need to go to plan view floor plan uh, and here it says top of footing I'll hit OK and now I get a new view up here that's that's uh, it's it's unassigned so I'll call this um, structural And then it's not going to be top of footing. Uh, we're going to call this foundation plan. So if I do rename, I'll call this foundation plan. And remember, we do not want to rename the corresponding level. So we'll say no. Uh, so again, what that was asking was, do we want this to say foundation plan? And we don't. Because in the story poll, this is a physical location of actual uh, elements of your project, you know, an actual wall or a footing is going to be located at this place. Foundation plan is just a term we use for that drawing. So let's come into our foundation plan. Um, we'll set it to quarter inch scale. We'll set it to medium detail level. We will turn on that filter so that we only see the plan, the uh, sections that we need. We'll hit OK. Um, now let's look at the section again. So the thing we also need to set, and we haven't talked a lot about this, is the view range. And the view range is basically the height and the extents of any plan view. And it's typically by default set at four feet, which means that it is uh, set four feet above the level that it's assigned to and is looking down. So if we copy this up four feet, we can see that this foundation plan that we just set is going to be basically cut where this red line is right here and looking down this way okay but we don't want that because that's going to be cutting through this wall it's going to be cutting through this door it's going to be looking at this slab what we want to do is have it cut through somewhere around here and look down because uh, this is where our foundation walls are going to be right the other thing is that we need to set it to look down infinitely because uh, it's assigned to this level and by default it looks only down to this level but our footings are actually going to be below it so what we're going to do is let's just take a dimension there let's say that's two feet right so if I cut this plan at two feet I'm not going to be hitting any of the walls above so that'll be a good height to cut this plan so if I go to foundation plan if I come over here to the uh, properties browser properties menu I'll do view range and here it says cut plane by default it's at four feet so I'll set that to two feet. I'll set the top to be just slightly above it, so two foot three. And the bottom, like I said, is at zero, but we need to see below that. We need to see uh, the footings beyond. So we'll just say unlimited. And I'll do view depth unlimited as well. So we'll hit OK, and now everything's gone away, which is fine because there's no geometry. There's nothing there in our project right now. So our view is starting to get set up. Let's hide these things. 
What we need to do now is start to model our foundation walls. And there's a bunch of different ways we can do that. Um, I'll show you a couple of them. Uh, this lesson on YouTube is a free excerpt from a paid professional Revit and Architecture course that I teach. Check out hyperfinearchitecture.com for more details. Uh, in the course, I take you step by step through the entire process of building this house from plans, sections, elevations, structural framing layout, foundation plans, everything you need to do uh, both architecture wise and in Revit to produce a set of construction documents for this house. Check it out at hyperfinearchitecture.com slash courses. So I've come into my first floor plan and the way I typically do it is what I, what I want to happen, my goal is that my foundation walls uh, the outside face of the foundation wall is going to line up with the outside face of the stud here. So it's that same location line that we've been talking about over and over again. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just draw some detail lines and copy them down. So I'll hit DL, I'll zoom in, I'll find the line that represents the outside face of my stud, and as long as I click on it, um, I don't have to be super accurate about tracing the wall because the lines are going to be my guides. Um, all I have to do is make sure that I'm actually on that and not on some other layer of my wall, like not on the inside or not on the sheathing or anything like that. As long as I'm on uh, that layer, it doesn't really matter sort of the length that I draw these lines. So I'll just draw a couple of them uh, because this is method one. Uh, now I have to select everything, filter, let me find my drafting lines red, I'll hit OK. I'll do control X because this is my working, or this is my architectural plan, I don't want any uh, drafting lines left over. So I just, I drew those lines to trace the studs. I copied them. Let me come down to the foundation plan and do control shift V. So now I know that those lines represent the outside face of the stud. And what I'm going to do is just draw a wall. I'll do D W A. Again, we're going to set a core face exterior and that's fine if it's, it doesn't matter what wall it is right now, we're going to set the wall type. So I'll make sure that I'm drawing the I'm drawing the outside face. I'll draw one this way. I'll draw one here. I'll draw one here. I'll hit escape. Now I'm going to use the align tool just to make sure that I've got my uh, that it's the outside face of that stud, the outside of the core is on that red line that I was drawing. Okay. So now I know that this wall is perfectly in alignment with the one below. And what I want to do is changes to a foundation wall. So I select all of them, I'll do edit type, duplicate, and I'll call this foundation, I'll say 8 inch concrete. We'll do edit, and I'm just going to delete all these layers. The only thing I want is a layer, an 8 inch layer of concrete that's right there in my core. So we'll hit delete, I'll say, um, I'll tr I think there's a concrete already in here. We'll do concrete cast in place gray. I'll change the cut pattern. It's already a light color, so that's fine. We'll hit OK. I'll make this 8 inches. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. And you see what happened is that all those other layers went away, but the face of the core stayed in the same location, which is exactly what I want. I want the outside face of that concrete to line up with the studs uh, above. So the next thing I need to do is change the constraints and it looks like it's already set up. So the base constraint is top of footing and the top constraint is top of slab. So let's come to our section and check out what we did. And what we did was we drew this wall right here. We drew this wall right here, which is exactly what we want to see. So here's our foundation wall. It's perfectly in the line with that stud below. If we come into a 3D view, we can see we got a little bit of a foundation wall right there in that location, okay? So that's one method of drawing the foundation wall. Another thing you could do is just literally copy the walls down. The only thing you have to worry about is that you're going to get some duplicate windows and doors. So let's select this wall, we'll select this wall, and I'll select this wall. I'll copy them, so I just hit Control C. If I come into my foundation plan, I'll do Control Shift V to paste in place. I get some warnings that uh, things are out of place, things are misaligned. But what I can do now is, uh, with this selected, and as long as the location line is set to uh, core face exterior, any change is going to keep the core face in that location. I can change uh, that type to the foundation wall, and you see it comes in perfectly in alignment. Now I've got a little bit of a 
overlap right there so I just delete the, the first one we made so now this one is still in alignment you can see but this one now goes up to that height so now I do have to spend some time uh, making sure that my wall is in the right place and I'll get some errors that's fine and now it's gonna say it can't cut that window out of there so you can see that my wall is in alignment I had to, it was a little bit of a roundabout way it was it was quicker doing the copying but then I had to fix some errors with the height and the windows so so that can be a little bit difficult the third thing we can do is we can come into a section we can select the wall we can set the so that's our first floor wall now that's going basically top of slab we set that up very early in the project if I set this one uh, if I set the uh, base constraint to be top of footing that wall is going to be down there to the top of the footing now I can use my split line and I can split this wall anywhere I want I will change this bottom one with core face exterior I'll change that bottom one to be the foundation type you can see that core stayed in alignment so I've got the outside face of the concrete lined up with the outside face of the stud I can set this base constraint now back to top of slab with no offset and the foundation wall will follow it and so basically now I have three you know I did that wall one method I did that wall a different method and I've done that wall a third method and the end result is the same that it's all lined up with the outside face of the stud below and it's going down to a level called top of footing so I've come through and and modeled the rest of the foundation walls um, and they're all in alignment but you do have to continuously check these against your sections and we'll confirm this when we do our dimensions the next thing though is we're going to add our actual footings and this is really really simple you can do it from any view any 3d or plan view but what I'm gonna do is I just I tap to select all the walls I'll do HI to isolate just so you can see what's happening uh, and if we go to structure wall this is going to add a 36 inch by 12 inch footing onto any wall I select so if I just uh, hover over one wall hit tab it's going to select the entire line of walls I'll left click and there we do there we go I've got my footings that are attached directly to that wall so whenever that wall shifts if it goes down or up or left or right that footing is going to stick with it uh, the only thing is I want to resize this a little bit I think that's a little bit too large so if I select one of them I'll select all I'll edit type I'll duplicate uh, 36 by 12 is a little bit big so the rule of thumb is I'm just gonna do three times the width uh, as my foundation wall and I'm gonna do this use the same thickness um, and that's perfectly good for for our purposes here so it's gonna be 24 inches wide it's gonna be 8 inches deep and we'll hit OK you can see it gets a little bit smaller so if we come back into our foundation plan you can see what we've done here right we've added this footing we want to change the visual properties of the actual footing for a couple reasons one is that if we're actually cutting through this wall the footing is in the dirt beyond so we want to show it as a dash line the second reason is we don't want uh, the footing visually to interfere with understanding where the foundation wall is the location of the foundation wall is is very important because this actually sets what the footprint of the house is going to be everything is built on top of that the footing can be a lot less accurate um, it's nice and perfectly clean uh, perfect lines here when we're doing it on the computer it's always good to remember that when it actually gets built it is going to be just a hole in the dirt and it's going to be muddy and so even if it's even if it's uh, sort of dug out nice and and straight it's really just a hole in the dirt um, that is not going to be as perfectly squared accurate as you're drawing it so we don't want to show it to interfere at all with our foundation walls and when we dimension these plans in a minute we're only going to dimension the actual walls and we're just going to put a note to the footing size so if I select any of those footings I'll right click I'll do override graphics and view by category so that's going to do all of them and I'm going to do surface pattern I'm going to make sure that both of those are off um, and then I'm going to do projection lines and I'm going to set the pattern to be some type of dashed line so I'll try dashed 1 8 and I think that'll work we'll hit OK and now our footings are dashed in we can clearly see our foundation walls and the footings are beyond 
was to mention our foundation plan. We're going to use a similar method to what we did in our architectural plans above. We're going to do an overall string that shows the total length. We're always going from the outside face of concrete to outside face of concrete, which again lines up with the outside face of stud above. Then we're going to do every building break, so every 90 degree turn. And then we'll do a wall thicknesses one. And it's important as you're going through this, one, we're going to do it on all four sides, but then you have to make sure that this matches with what you have above. And so you can confirm this both with the dimension string and by checking in section. So I'm going through this pretty quickly. We covered uh, dimensions in great detail in an earlier lesson. But I'm using the same construct. So what we want to do is make sure that this 56 feet out to out lines up with above, and this 35 six and a half lines up because the outside face of that concrete and this concrete should line up with the outside face of the stud above. So we want that to be 35 six and a half. Let's see if we got it right. So we've got 56 feet out to out, 35 six and a half. So if I cut a section right through this wall, I would see that everything is in alignment. So let me come back to my arc, my uh, foundation plan and I will continue uh, dimensioning all four sides. Right, I'll get this building break, I'll get this one, and uh, I'll do the wall thicknesses. And this is another instance where I might break the string just as long as it's continuous all the way across. I think it's okay if it's a little bit closer to one wall just to make it a little bit more readable. So I'll continue that on those other four side, on those other two sides. I'll pause the video just for a second. So I've got my plan dimensioned. The only thing else I have to do right now is add a note about the footings. Again, we're not dimensioning to the footings, we're dimensioning to the walls. And I'm just going to use a text note to say uh, what size this footing is. So I'll add a text note with the leader. I'll say 24 inch by 8 inch footing, typical. Uh, and since they're all the same, I just need one note and it calls it out and just says basically they're all the same thing. If it was more complex, I could add type, I could tag them, create a schedule. But on a simple project like this, this will be enough. We're going to come back to the foundation plan in a little bit after we do our uh, second floor framing and roof framing plans because we're going to end up with some columns that need spot footings that have to be shown on this plan. But for now, uh, our foundation plan is done.